morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Ralph Graves Jr.'s show. It's another Wednesday. It's July 1st. It is July 1st. Let's all celebrate July 1st. July 1st. Wow. First of the, it's the first of the month. Um, rent's due. <laughs> rent's due. Everything is due, right? Wake up. Wake up. But so good to have you guys here on this morning. Welcome to Ralph Graves Jr.'s show. My name is Ralph Graves. I'm just so happy to have you guys tuning in today. Uh, we have a, a great topic today, and uh, I think it's a great topic, and we'll dive into that. But before we do, I always like to say good morning to those who really make this show work. So I want to say good morning to all my co-hosts in the room. Say good morning, Janae. Good morning. I'm Janae. Kair. Good morning. <laughs> Jason produced the show. What's up, man? Jamie Blake, where you at? How are you this morning, Jamie? Well, thank you. So glad to have you on the air today. So um, it's another Wednesday. How was everybody's weekend? Everybody have an adventurous weekend? Everybody have a good time? You know, I like the weekend report. Let's go around the room. Let's start with Jason. How was your weekend, brother? It's all right. I went to, uh, went to help my mother at me and my brother because uh, – a couple of years ago, since we moved, since uh, me and my fiance got together, moved out. So, I turned my old room into my mom's now personal gym, since now she doesn't want to go to the gym with everything going on. Right, right. So, now she's got elliptical, she's got exercise bike, she's got a squat machine, she's got everything up there now. Very good, very good. Good morning to all those on Facebook Live, Resica Brown, Annette Drake. What's up, cousin? Deshaun Clark. Um, good to see you guys online. Hey, share this with, with some folks. Um, that's good to hear, Jason. That's good to hear. Always helping moms out. That's good, man. It's a good look. Um, Kaya, how was your weekend? Uh, my weekend was good. It was busy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Had a good time now? Yes. All right. You made some money? Yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Janae, how was your weekend? Ooh. Um, pretty all right, I guess. Yeah. I don't remember anything. How, how's the wedding planning going? Oh, my gosh. Um, It's fine. Yeah. It's it's so boring. I don't want to do any of it. I like right, right. Uh, I just don't care. Yeah, you just really want to get married. Yeah, I get you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But it's going. We made our registry. Okay, where are you registered? At? Amazon. Okay, but like you know, I just want like all the million, everything. all of the millions of listeners to know you're registered at Amazon. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good weekend. You know, weekends are always busy. We um Sunday uh, uh after church. We took, um, you know, we normally hang out. We were on our way to the Cape May Lewis Ferry, my wife and I, my uh, oldest daughter, Jasmine. Hey, Jazz, good morning. And we were taking uh, her three children, my grandkids, to the Cape May Lewis Ferry, Jason. But one of the boats broke down. You weren't stuck in the water again like the kayak. No, oh no, no. I didn't even get on this time, right? So one of the boats broke down. So we turned around and we ended up at the, um, at the Cape May Zoo. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it was fun, man. It's, you know, you always always, always like to see the grandkids excited. And I, I found out that it was my granddaughter's first time ever seeing anything like that. She was so excited by the animals. And so... Uh, she never been to the zoo? No, she never been to the She's only five. I guess she's five. Yeah, yeah. You know, so she was so <laughs> excited about seeing all of that. So that was a good time. That was a good time. Jamie, what you do this weekend? It's funny because we had family Sunday on Friday. And we were supposed to go to the... Cape May Sue and then to the beach, but we went to the beach first, and we had such a nice time there. We never made it to the Cape May Sue. Yeah, we yeah. After, after the beach, it wears you out. Friday. Yeah, yeah. After the, where'd you go to the beach at Cape May? We went to North Wildwood. Okay, okay. Yeah, beach wears you out. I went to the beach on Monday. Um, I went to the beach Monday. Usually, it's just my wife and I, Jamie. Right, we can relax in the whole nine. Right, you know, we do what right. we do. Well, the kids overheard us, the grandkids overheard us talking about the beach <laughs> on Sunday. Pop, pop, can we go with you to the beach tomorrow? What am I going to say, no? You know, what kind of pop, pop says no? Yeah, 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 you can go, you can go. And, I, I, you know, we had fun, but, man, watching kids all day long is rough. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot how challenging that is. I mean, they had a great time, but, you know, I wasn't really relaxing. Janae asked me, did you read? Did you go to sleep? No, I brought my books out there. I don't think I read a page. No, no, you can't get a green gun with six kids. No, no. But it was a good time. It was a good time. It was good family fun, though. 
Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good family fun. It was good family fun. We had a good time. Guys, here's the topic for today, right? I want you guys to think about it. And then uh, I have a we have a, a call in guest. She's being on the line with us today. We'll talk to her. But the 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 um the topic is this: why behavior change is so hard, and why you should keep trying. We'll talk about it's time to change our habits. Behavior, if we are honest, behavior change is so hard, but we need to keep trying. Good morning, Diane Jones. We need to keep trying. Okay, so that's what we're talking about today. It's our topic, why behavior change is so hard. Now, our Twitter poll today, our Twitter poll, go to Ralph Graves Jr. on Twitter. And our Twitter poll today is, if I find out, here it is, guys. And we can you can argue from either side of it. Does a straw have two holes or one? You think about a straw, what say you, Jason? Does a straw have two holes or one? Uh, I'll go two. Okay. I'll you go, say two. Yeah, I'll go two. Just because you can make, you know, the hole subjective, how deep the hole you can make. You can make two small holes and make that same straw. So I'll go two. Uh, very good. Janae, what say you? One. One. Okay. One hole. Kyer, what do you say? Um, I'll say one. One? Yeah. Okay. Jamie, what do you say? I'm going to say one. One long hole. I'm going to. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the way guys see things. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We, me and my wife, we, you know, we, it's a great topic to debate. Does a straw have two holes or one? So it's on Twitter poll. Go check it out. We just try to bring some fun Twitter, Twitter excitement Larry, there. Larry, that's two. He's on board with you, Pastor. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Larry Blake. <laughs> From the back room. Thank you, Larry. Erica Bogan checks in. All the ladies are saying one. <laughs> so far, it has been 100% of the ladies. Erica Bogan checks in from Facebook Live. She says one. All guys, myself, Larry Blake, Jason in the room, we're saying two. A straw has two holes. That's straw just has one hole. Whatever. I'm just saying, <laughs> Twitter will tell us the truth. <laughs> it, has two ends. it has two ends. I'm talking about them. Ken Dominic, all the way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know what he says, guys? Two. I'm going to go vote right now. Two. Two. My daughter, the, Michael Morton, checks in. Two. So weird. Two. Annette Drayton, yeah, my cousin, she checks in. She says one. I'm telling you, it has two holes. Guys, we got to stay. We got to stay pat, guys. Guys, we got to stay pat on this. We got to be strong on this. Guys, go to Diane Jones Johnson. One. Of course, all the ladies are going to say one. I don't know why. Might have to dig into that. Why do ladies say one and guys say two? Go to my Twitter poll. Janae is already there. She's voting. So it's 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 100% in favor of the ladies right now. But I'm telling you, a straw has two, right? Thank you, Mike Morton. Mike Morton is making a strong argument. He says, because if you add another hole to a straw, it would have three. No, it would <laughs> have two. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's what we're talking about today. But we have a very special guest calling in today, and she's on hold, and we're going to get her involved in the program um, uh, right after right after we break. But um, and Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, she's a, a phenomenal young lady um, and a lot to offer, and, and uh, we're going to talk to her. And she's going to weigh in on all things Ralph Graves Jr. show. She's going to talk about why behavior change is so hard. She's going to join that conversation. She's also going to help settle the argument that uh, a straw has two holes, where most ladies say it has one. I mean, yeah, for all the guys, we, we know it's two. Annette Thomas says, it's one, two? She says she doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know. I, I'll tell you how I answer that. Call Anthony. He'll tell you how many holes the straw has. He's going to say two. He's going to say two. But guys, it's the Ralph Gray Jr. Morning Show. We're so happy to have you guys here. Now, I want to talk about Real quick, real quick, uh, before we even, and thank you, the call-in numbers, guys, call in 888-329-3306. That's the call-in number if you want to weigh in on what we're talking about. But we're going to talk about why behavior change is so hard and why you should keep trying. And um, there there are some there are some steps that, that we're going to look at today. Um, 
you know, the, the impact of your lifestyle, it, 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 it factors on your habits, your lifestyle, how you live your life. You have to factor in your habits. And some of us need to change if we want a brighter future. I wrote about that in my book, Unstoppable, Unstoppable, right? Unstoppable, seven universal laws that'll change the way you uh, achieve, uh, will transform the way you pursue and achieve success. And, and there's, a, there's a chapter in there on habits. Your habits will, I don't care who you are, I don't care who you are, your habits will dictate how you live your life. Your habits will, your, your life is, you're going to live out your life via the habits. So we're going to talk about why we have to change these things and, and, and may impact our, our lifestyle. Now, the first thing we have to understand is this, and this is what I want to say before we go to break. Change is a process and not an event. All right. I think that's where a lot of us go wrong. We, we think that change is a one-time event. I'm going to change. It's a process. It's not a one. That's why diets fail. That's why a lot of things fail, because we think that it's a one-time event. We have to approach this as change being a process. If I want to better my life, if I want to go in a different direction, it's a process, all right? To change my bad behavior, is a process. So that's the first thing that I want you guys to, as we in, dive into this conversation, I want you to understand that it, it's not an event. It's not an event. Change is a process. Um, so call in today. Call in today, 888-329-3306. We're on Facebook Live, streaming live on YouTube. This is this is www.dbam.com, 860 on the AM dial. Um, Jump in and be part of this conversation. Hey, guys, if you want to take out an ad on the Ralph Graves Jr. show, you guys can um, can email me at Ralph at Ralph Graves Jr. Um, dot com dot com. Um, if you want me to show up and do some speaking or, or some things like that, you can email me there at the same place. But we're going to take a break. We're going to come right back with our guest, Jacqueline Kerbeck, and we're going to dive into this topic in the Twitter poll and so much more. My name is Ralph Graves. You are listening to WWDBAM.com, 860 on the AM dial. We will be right back. Good morning. My name Revive Hydration is a proud sponsor of the Ralph Graves Morning Show. Revive Hydration is the first IV hydration and vitamin infusion service in the South Jersey area. For more details, please visit their website at www.revivehydration.com or you can give them a call at 856-485-0070. Again, their website, www.revivehydration.com or give them a call at 856-485-0070. Oh, yeah, because our mics are, are muted. At www.peoplefirstlawyers.com and see how we can assist you. <coughs> Be sure to mention that you heard us on the Ralph Graves Jr. Show and ask for Jamie. Oh, Jesus. I know. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I know I did this Sick again. Goals. Sydney Make came back. I was every single day. What do you do on a daily basis? I never remember it. what you until... do. Run parallel with what you do. If not, that's okay. <laughs> okay Evaluate okay. what you do on a daily it? basis. Make small changes. Yeah. Set goals and make them happen. Engage the, the main Facebook part audience. Is writing down you what you do on a daily basis. Oh, nigga, I'm just looking at Facebook. I'm thinking about something. Facebook caught me in deep thought, man. It caught me in deep thought. Thanks for checking in, Facebook audience. I'm here, but I'm thinking about some other stuff. Hi, Facebook audience. This is Jay. If you have any specific questions for me and how I got to join this show, you can um, call the station and we can talk live, or you can you know, put in the chat and I'll see you at the bottom. www.xathletics.co Hi, my mom. Hey, my mom checked in. We got it. My mom said changing habits is really hard work. Yeah, we got to talk about that. I don't do Twitter, but it's one hole, but two ends. Who said that? Mama, you ain't finished reading the comment? Oh. <laughs> it's the same hole. It's not like this straw, like... It's two holes. 
Two holes. How many how many holes is a gunshot wound? Two. Exit wound, enter enter wound, and exit wounds. Two. It makes one hole. Like it's a tunnel. You ask me that. I, I, okay, whatever. You ask me. I'm just telling you. It's a tunnel. It's one hole. Entrance wound, exit What's happening, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to the Ralph Graves Jr. Morning Show. I'm Ralph Graves, and we are in a heavy debate about this straw thing. <laughs> but before we, we get back to that, I'm going to welcome to the show my friend, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Are you there, Doc? Yes. Good morning, Ralph. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I am fantastic. Thanks. I'm so excited to be part of your show today. Thank you invitation. I'm so glad to have you on. I was explaining to them, I said, listen, there's just some people in your life that you have to keep around. And I keep Dr. Jacqueline Kerr back around in my life. And I thank you for being part of that. I really do. Well, back at you. I thank you too. And I'm just so glad that we met and connected right away. Yeah. Yeah. Now tell the listening audience what you do. I am a certified life coach and I help people professionally and personally grow and change and then I also help people with some alternative investments to the stock market. So I provide some options for people to invest their money if they want to do something to expand or diversify their portfolio. Yes, and you're being modest. You have a radio show. You have a TV show. Listen, I know what's going on. You're being modest to this <laughs> to, to my audience. Listen, guys, she has a radio show. She has a TV show, and Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck is on the line, and I'm so glad that you're here today. We're talking about this topic on why behavior change is so hard and why we should keep trying. And the first point that I made was that change is a process and not an event. Change is a, would you agree with that, Doc? Yes, I absolutely believe that change is a journey. And if you are committed for the long term to really make something significant happen in terms of eliminating an ineffective pattern of behavior, that while you're on this journey, you're going to learn what I call during the ride. Yeah. So enjoy the ride to have the fulfillment of making change at the end of your journey. Sure, sure. Now, at, you know, the, the Ralph Graves show, we, we we deal with some major topics. And a major topic we're dealing with today, it's been 100% women against the men. A straw, Doc. <laughs> How many holes does a straw have? Tell us, what do you think? Ralph, I have to go with the ladies and say one. You guys yeah, are killing me, yeah. killing me. <laughs> Killing my, my mom, my mom, my mom is on. I'm, I've got Facebook Live on here. My mom is going off in my comments. She did normally doesn't say anything. She is she yeah, is adamant right. about. I said one hole, but it has two ends. She's at all the ladies say one hole. My my good friend Mark Smith is with his wife. His wife Joyce checked and she says she says one, but Mark says two. Why is it, guys, that we say two and the women say one? Why why are the women wrong on this? I just don't understand. <laughs> How so many women can be wrong, you know? And I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. So we're going to keep talking about that, but that's on the Twitter poll. So changes. So, Ralph, are, yes. I have a question. If you're driving through a tunnel, that's what I said, Jeff. One, one continuous opening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's two. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jacqueline, even when I'm wrong, I'm going to stay wrong. It's two. <laughs> I'm going to be committed to it. You're right. I'm not abandoning the fellas. It's two. Okay, so we talked about why change is so hard, right? We talked about that it's it's an uh, it's a process, not an event. Now. Part of this, and, and I want people to to kind of to kind of weigh in on this. And I got the good doctor on the line, and, and Jamie's on the line, and, and we're having a good show today. The first step is what we call pre-contemplation. You guys know what that is? Pre-contemplation, right? At that stage, you have no conscious intention of making a change. You're just thinking about doing something, right? You know, it, it may, maybe because you lack uh, awareness or information. Uh, you know, but you're just, it's pre-contemplation. I mentioned it. I mentioned it, but I really don't, you know, I'm not even contemplating change just yet. I mentioned it. Like, um, I don't know, Jason, I need to paint the house. That's pre-contemplation, right? I mentioned it. I know good and well, 
uh, until I get up, go paint shopping, look at that stuff. I'm not contemplating yet. So maybe maybe it's something to do with my health. Maybe I'm smoking. Maybe I'm drinking. Maybe I'm I'm drugging or whatever the case may be. I it's I know I need to stop. And and it, I but I I I, I haven't. I don't know how. I know. I, so it starts with pre contemplation. Um, uh, let, let's talk about that for about you know two minutes. Two minutes on, on pre contemplation. Jamie, talk to me about that. You, that that's that's part of the process of, of of change. Have you ever been in that spot where you know what? I think I need to do something, but I'm not real serious about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. and moving out of that, just like you said, noticing that something needs to be done to making a commitment to do something about it is a big gap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It I is. do I do pre contemplation um surrounding my room a lot. Okay. Like I should clean my room or put away this laundry. Right. <laughs> but until you But I pre right. contemplated a right. lot. Right. What about you, Kyer? With this pre-contemplation, it's part of change. Which it's even in the little things. Would you find yourself stuck there? Are you able to move out of it? Um, stuck for a little while, but I eventually have to make a decision. But um, that's me all the time, like all the time. Really, I'm really. Horrible. Hey, hold a news flash. This just in. If I'm reading this correctly on Facebook Live, Joyce Smith says this. She says it's a tube. And a tube has two holes in order to be a tube. So she says, ladies, I'm sorry. Thank no, you. We tube, have one woman is one who has hole. seen the light. Thank you, Mark, for being such a strong influence on your wife. <laughs> we have seen. <laughs> we have seen. We have a woman who has seen the light. Thank you, Sister Joyce. So this pre-contemplation, right? We we talked about it in in, in the smaller things, and let, let's go into to deeper things. It's so very hard, like you know, um, uh, uh, if, if I if I'm and I'm talking about a bad habit that I know that later on in life it could mean some some health issues. I'm talking about later on in life it could it could destroy my marriage. It could destroy my relationship. It just could really be harmful. Uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Kerbeck, why is it so hard to leave there? Why, why, do, why, do, why do we go straight? Why do we always start with pre-contemplation and not just into uh, preparation or making the change? Why do you think that step is so difficult, Doc, to move from pre-contemplation to contemplation? What I found personally and also with clients is that we set ourselves up to fail and that at the or we are empowered by negative emotions, fear, and the thought that you might fail. So yeah. why bother to do something when you might fail anyway? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we let that overwhelm our thoughts. But how do we know we're going to fail, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know I'm going to fail at anything until I try it. And also, Ralph, what's wrong with failing? Because when we fail, we learn. Right. Nothing wrong with failing. Nothing wrong with failing. You know, we, we think failing is a is a big deal, man. Hey, yeah, listen, like you said, we learn. I, I, what what do we used to say? Or I, I read it. I read it a long time ago. Um, sometimes you win. Sometimes you learn. <laughs> you know, things like that. And so it is. You know. So it, it, the first step is pre contemplation. Now, um, people in this stage of pre contemplation, right? They tend to avoid reading, talking, or thinking about that unhealthy behavior. But their awareness and their interest might be sparked by an outside um, uh, influence, you know, maybe uh, some public information campaigns, whatever the case may be. But a lot of times when we're in this pre contemplation, we kind of have our head in the sand. You know, we, we kind of we avoid reading or talking or thinking about that behavior or that activity that we we know we need to change or we know we need to do, but we really don't want to do it. And 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 at the show, I try to keep the show into at a, at a place to where we are really measuring our own behavior. I'm not a behavior scientist. I'm not any of that. But I but I'm big on monitoring our own behavior so that we can be the best people that God created us to be. Everybody on this broadcast. 
knows that I'm a pastor, no, I'm a born again Christian, I'm a believer. And I also believe that everyone, whether you believe in God or not, whether you trust Christ or not, you were put on this planet for a reason. You were put here to, to do a job that only you can do. A lot of times we have to get out our own way. We develop unhealthy habits, unhealthy behavior. We develop, we develop lifestyles that are not conducive for us or to us uh, for becoming, uh, allowing us to become the person we were designed to be. But that's why we kind of have these shows like this on, let me look at my behavior. Why is behavior change so hard? And why should we keep trying? First step is pre-contemplation, right? The next step, guys, next step is contemplation. After pre-contemplation comes contemplation, right? That's, uh, that's, that's you know, people say I've, I've been now I've really been considering a change. And in the next six months, I'm really going to kind of get up and make move. Um, and and at, at this stage, you are aware that your behavior is a problem. At this stage, you're aware that something needs to be done, but you still haven't made the commitment to take action yet. Now, but it's it's better than pre-contemplation. I'm aware of it. I've measured it. What doesn't get measured doesn't get moved. I've measured it. I'm aware of it, but I still haven't made a commitment to take action. You might say, hey, listen, all right, if I stop smoking, I might lose this cough. Uh, but I'll know I'll gain weight. You know, we always, we always kind of, you know, we always kind of looking for the worst of situations, right? Um, and so, and so that that's that's where contemplation is. Let me look at this. Let me look at Facebook Live again. All right, Joy Smith is still standing on her point here. She says, Mark says to um, now. Joy Smith has she has. Um, okay, she stands on two. Thank you, Sister Joyce, for standing strong. Thank you. What's the Twitter poll say on my tube here? On my on my uh my straw. What's Twitter poll? One one hole or two. What's it say? Anybody know? Good check. Who's winning? We're winning. We're winning. Jacqueline Kerback says, I have reconsidered and I think the tube has two holes. Jacqueline, you could have said that live on air. Can you say that? <laughs> I saw that you said that on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Doc. See, this is why I keep Dr. Jacqueline Kerback around. Well, it says just you know why Ralph, I wanted to see it in writing. I wanted to not just Say it, but I wanted to actually put it in writing and make it public so that the change was now out there for all to see. Right. So, I, but I want to hear you say it because if you don't say it, you're going to appear to be double-minded, and we know Scripture I have says. Considered it, and I think that it too has. <laughs> Thank you so much. We go, Jason. We're gonna win this thing, man. Uh, what's the Twitter post? It's fifty-fifty now, but when I went on there, it was sixty-six. Um, it's, just one was winning. Right, but it's fifty-fifty now. The guys are turning it around. I got a feeling that Michael Morton is going to jump on there. He's going to get it done for me. Larry Blake is going to jump on there and get it done for me. So we talked about we talked about contemplation, right? I'm pre-contemplation. We talked about contemplation, right? This is the stage again where where I, I know I have to uh, have to make a change, right? But I still haven't made the commitment. Why do we get stuck here? Jason, you ever been there where you're contemplating making a change, but I haven't made the commitment? What are some of the excuses you may have used, man? I just, I pretty much use any, every excuse in the book. Like I remember, <laughs> I remember uh, years ago, just knew, I, I knew I had to lose weight. I, I hit that certain number where I was like, all right, once I hit this number here, I have to do something. But then I even exceeded that number. I just kind of like, all right, forget about it. But then I, last year kind of, got a dog and kind of, you know, he got me exercise and the yeah. kind of, I thought about like dieting and everything. I, I right. know I can never just have a strict diet, but I knew that like, if I can take things realistically and I can kind of like, all right, if I eat better more days and not, I'm on the right path. But for years I was like, oh, I'm never going to, I can never eat healthy. I'm going to eat what I enjoy. Yeah. And now just kind of, it took me years to process that. And, right. you know, I've been on that path ever since. So. So you went from pre-contemplation to contemplation. And guys, it is hard, but but Jason said something. He actually jumped into our next step. And I know I'm, I'm moving kind of fast. Well, the show's moving kind of fast. Our next step is preparation. He said he started working out when he got the dog. We started, you know, the dog forced him to exercise. And that that was a big thing for him. And so there has to there has to be uh, from pre contemplation to contemplation. I haven't made a commitment. Now I'm making preparations. Now I've, I've kind of made this commitment. Now at this stage, you know you have to change, and you believe you can. 
You see, that that's when you start making preparation, when you believe that you can. And it takes a certain mindset. Dr. Jack McKerbeck said earlier that a lot of times we fear failure or so we get inside our own heads. But when you prepare, you know that you, you believe that you can. You're not really going to do anything unless you believe that you can that that you can get it done and and, and you have to prepare. And that means that you have to take um, an approach that works for you. My approach to my problems, we might have the same problem, whatever it is, but my my approach to it might not work for you. Your approach to how you handle it might not work for me. And so, again, you have to know yourself and you have to know what you need to do to step into this preparation stage to make things happen. Janae, what's your comment on, on that preparation stage? How do you feel about that? Um, I was, well, I was just thinking like, I, I do things like when we when we have shows about different topics and stuff, yeah. I'm like, do I do any of this stuff? And like I really have to like think hard on if yeah. I even do stuff like that. But yeah. but like with this one, the preparation, I just went back to my whole um financial situation. Yeah. Like money was just flying out the window. I had no idea where it was going. Bills right. were always late. My account was always in the negative. And I'm like I guess I should do something about that. like I yeah. should do something about that like yeah. pre contemplation and everything and then contemplation and then I actually prepared to change when I hired you know the budget queens yeah and they really got me like you know I I thought I could if I just had the information like yeah. I was like all right I can fix this but yeah. it's not gonna fix it without any kind of knowledge on the subject so i had to go out get help right and i'm like smooth sailing right now like i'm like taking actual steps well that's great and shout out to the budget queens sam, sam and uh mia shout out to the budget queens so what you did janae was preparation is creating an action plan with realistic goals mm -hmm. that's what preparation is guys jamie that's what preparation is uh dr kerbeck that jacqueline that's what preparation is 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 um, uh, creating a plan with a realistic goal. You know why most diets don't work? They're not realistic. I'm going to lose 40 pounds in a month. In a month. Yeah, I'll visit you in the hospital as well. <laughs> it takes time. Be realistic. Be realistic in it. And that's, that's, that's what preparation is. Create, I hope you guys are taking notes, create an action plan that are realistic with realistic goals. Now I'm preparing. I haven't even, I haven't even taken action yet, but I'm 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 preparing an action plan. I've went from pre-contemplation to contemplation to preparation. And you know what this preparation thing is? And guys, um, I know I'm up against the break, but I'm gonna keep talking. It's facing some stuff that you don't want to face. It's facing a giant. I often talk about that in church. David couldn't kill Goliath until he faced it. You can't get over that bad habit or have that life change until you face it. Hey, listen, let me be honest. This is where I am. You have to say that about yourself. You have to face it in order to fix it. Janae talked about it. Janae said, listen, I had to face the issue that money was just leaving and going everywhere. And I'm not even know where it's going. I have to I have to fix. So that's part of the preparation is facing it, having courage to face it. It's It's never as bad as you think it is. Just face it and prepare to, to, to fix it. So that's part of the um, preparation thing. Guys, you're still weighing in on, on the straw, two holes, one hole. Um, Joyce Smith said um, um, it's it's something we know we have to do, but there's still, there's there is no challenge. What is it? But we limit ourselves. There's there's It's really not a challenge, but we limit, our, limit ourselves when we become comfortable if I or if we admit um, and if we admit it in our discomfort, you you have to admit it in your discomfort. You have to admit that I need change. You have to admit it, right? My mom says, Sandra Graves checked in on Facebook Live. She says, changing habits is really hard work. We usually don't like how it feels when we try to make a change. Change is necessary at times. And on a, and on a whole, people don't feel safe until they get used to the change. Mom said, I don't use Twitter. What'd she say? I don't use Twitter, but... Uh, it has one hole. <laughs> okay, mom. Um, guys, what do you think about? Um, let, let me talk, go back to Dr. Kerbeck. She's on, and I know I said I was going to hold you for a half hour, but I'm not going to let you go. You got time to hang out with us the rest of the half hour, the rest of the show? 
Yes, Ralph, I do. Thank you. So talk to us about this preparation stage right before we go to break. This preparation stage, um, um, it's, 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 it's difficult for, for many, but what's some advice that you give your clients on this preparation? But by the time they see you, they've passed pre-contemplation, they're confident and they're prepared to do some things by the time they come see you. So, so what kind of advice do you give them on this preparation point? I ask them to envision themselves on the other side of change. What does their life look like yeah. after they've made this change? We also discuss a support structure. So when times are getting tough and they feel like they want to give up, that they have mm -hmm. people in their corner who know what their plan is and they're there to help. And the other thing is that in order to replace one ineffective pattern of behavior, you have to have something else yeah. there to backfill it. Yeah. 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 Envision. Envision yourself. What you're gonna look like after this change. Is that hard for me? Is that hard for you guys to do? Is it hard for us to do, guys in the room? Jamie, is that hard for us to do? You know, envision where you wanna be financially, health wise. Is that difficult? Kaya's shaking her head no. Kaya, tell the folks no. Oh, no. <laughs> is it hard? <laughs> Jamie, what 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 about what about you when it comes to really envisioning? I mean, not the ones that you named, but I think it can be hard to um, visualize yourself on the other side of change. What habits that you're very comfortable with and you've done for so long yeah. that you know, it is sometimes hard to yourself on the other side of it, especially if it's a pattern of behavior that involves, um, like we were talking about in other shows, your social circle, you know, your inner circle, right. you know, if you, some, some behaviors, once you change them, it changes your, your circle. Yes. Because for example, if you're, if you're a drinker and all of your closest friends and family are drinkers mm -hmm. and you decide I'm going to stop drinking, then in order to get that done, you're not going to be able to go to all of the drinking events, all of the bars, all of the places that you guys used to connect around, you connected around drinking. Right. So now you not only have to change just that habit of drinking, but now you're changing a circle. So sometimes that can be um, more difficult to visualize than just stopping the drinking itself. And we will, you know what I'm I know what you're saying. And it's a shame that we will hold on to, to circles at our own demise. Exactly. We will hold on. And and <laughs> I, I, Jamie, you were there. I preached Sunday about, you know, we, we talked about some toxic folks that, that brought the woman caught, caught in adultery to, to Christ. It's always toxic people that want to put you out there. And so we, we have to, we, we have to, our, our friends and loved ones, phenomenal people. I'm not saying that you don't love them, shouldn't love them. But if their behavior and the behavior that you partake in when you're with them is toxic behavior, you have to be smart enough to say, I can't do this no more. And listen, I can love you and we can hang out, but if we're going to do this, I can't roll with you. No, My future is more important than this present right here. So it's part of that, 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 that preparation, start envisioning yourself on, on who you want to be. Guys, I want to take a break. We're going to come back we're going to talk about the Twitter poll. We're going to talk about, we're going to finish up these last couple steps on, on why behavior change is so hard and why you should keep trying. This is, uh, and guys, call in. It's not too late to call in. 888-329-3306. you have any questions for Dr. Jack McCurbeck, any questions for, for Jamie, myself, Kyer, Jason, call in. Let's talk, guys. Let's talk. 888-329-3306, www.dbam.com, 860 on the AM dial, my name is Ralph Graves, and this is the Ralph Graves Jr. Show. We will be right back with the verse of the day. Revive Hydration is a proud sponsor of the Ralph Graves Morning Show. Revive Hydration is the first IV hydration and vitamin infusion service in the South Jersey area. For more details, please visit their website at www.revivehydration.com or you can give them a call at 856-485-0070. Again, their website, www.revivehydration.com or give them a call at 856-485-0070. <laughs> Facebook Live. Also, please visit our website. You guys are awesome. Guys, what are you saying about the straw? You guys sharing this? Hey, listen, share this. Make this a watch party. Let's try to help some people break some habits or, or talk about behavior change. 
I think we're winning with the two hole mm -hmm. debate. Set goals. I think we're winning with that. What you do every single day. I think we're what winning with the two hole debate. Right? We really are with straws. No, because, no, no. It's not necessarily. Evaluate what you do on a daily basis. It's not. Make small changes. Set goals and make them happen. Make more. It's right down what you do on a daily basis. Evaluate. It's like on a garden hose. Is that one or two? Day to day basis. On a hose. Age. Size. Building. Yeah, people talking about tunnels. 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 This is a lifestyle. This is a way of life. This is a decision. A conscious decision for yourself. Coach Lee. Hey guys, consider on, on being partners with the show. Take out an ad. You hear these commercials? Um, you can have a commercial too. <laughs> and advertise what you're doing. I'm proud of this audience. I'm really proud of this audience. You guys are doing great stuff. Revive hydration. It's a It's Rock Up. Rock Up Savior. Revive Hydration. Hey guys, go to my YouTube channel too and, start, and and like those videos. Here's the thing, right? I need to get I need to get 100 views within seven days of the last video I posted. It'll kind of help me get a different category with YouTube. So help me out. Go view my stuff on YouTube. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back um, to the Ralph Graves Junior Show. And now it is time for the verse of the day. Your days are numbered. Sounds like a threat, but in reality, it's good to know. Psalm 9012 says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Ask God for wisdom daily and use that granted wisdom so you can make your life count. I'm Janae Graves, and that was your verse of the day. Thank you, Janae. She hit the nail on the head. Psalm 90, teach us to number our days. We count we count our life in years, man. Biblically, they count your life in days. So be wisdom, have wisdom, be wise, make them count. You know, let's, let's drop some of these bad habits. Guys, if you don't know, I pastor Cornerstone Community Church in Millville, New Jersey, been there 14 years. And uh, without, a without a doubt, and I unashamedly say this, that Jesus Christ is my personal Savior, and he can be yours too. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know my favorite word in that verse? It's that word, whosoever. You guessed it, whosoever. Whosoever. Doesn't matter what I look like, doesn't matter how long my hair is, don't matter what kind of challenges I'm facing in life, it does, none of that matters. The text says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And my, my education, it, it doesn't matter. Christ says, come to me just as you are. And let me tell you guys, let me tell you how my life changed. I'm gonna give me a short testimony, we get back into this. Born and raised in the church, PK, pastor's kid, the whole nine, right? You might think that my entrance into heaven was automatic. No, it's not. My entrance into the kingdom of God had to be based on my own belief in Christ. But anyway, I've been in church my whole life, man. I could speak church and ease. You know what church and ease is, right? Blessed by the best, highly favored. All, all the church speak that you hear, right? That really turns off non-believers. So I was very fluent in church and ease and all this kind of stuff, but my life wasn't right because Christ was not an, an, an integral part of my life, right? And so I'm, I, I get to church one day, I'll never forget, I'm sitting in the back of the balcony and I and, was uh, still living in my dad's house. This is when the change occurred, right? And I always, always thought Christ was calling me to preach and do what I'm doing now. So I'm sitting in the back of the balcony and I had just come in from whatever I was doing. And I just got in like five or six in the morning. I remember my dad coming to my room, busting the room on Sunday morning. He said, I'm, you're behind, better be in church. Now, y'all, check this out. I still felt the effects of the beverages of the night prior. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You, you, you ever show up somewhere and you still have lit? That was me. I showed up at church, past the sun, sitting in the balcony. I'm sitting in the back and I'm still buzzed. I know. I sat in the back because I know they could smell the liquor on me. I know they could. So I'm sitting in the back, right? I'm still buzzed. Dad gets up and he preaches a sermon, right? And he talks about, and, and I've heard sermons my whole life. And, and, um, and, and oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Now, I'm at a place in my life, I'm I'm kind of kind of down, kind of depressed, but I had to ask myself, I've never really took a taste to see if the Lord is good. I've tasted everything else, but I've never really took a taste to see if the Lord is good. And he made a challenge. He said, if you try him, that was back in the day when those infomercials were on. I don't know if it's Jamie and, and Dr. Jacqueline might remember these commercials where you just try something for 10 days and if you don't like it, you can return it, right? So my, my dad in the invitation, he said, listen, just try Christ wholeheartedly for 10 days. And if your life does not change, you never try Christ again, but try Christ wholeheartedly for 10 days. I said, you know what? The way I'm feeling, I got a kid out of wedlock, right? I got uh, my, my my oldest daughter. She was born. I'm out of wedlock, you know, and, and I'm just start kind of doing my thing. And, 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 um, um, and, and, you know, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to try Christ for an honest 10 days, right? I gave him my all for 10 days. Guys, and I'm still here. I am still rocking with Christ. I am still, I am not perfect, but I tell you what, my life has been transformed because I decided to make a change. That's what we're talking about. Went from pre-contemplation to a contemplation to preparation. I've been to church my whole life. Now, because of one sermon that I heard, now listen, I was literally born in the building. I was I was born around the corner from the church. I'd been in church from the time I was born. I was born in the place. But I decided, I, preparation went to action. I decided to give Christ my entire life. And let me tell you, even with the, uh, I still have ups and downs, trials and tribulations, but I'm not going through it alone. So that's why I kind of stand on John 3, 16. But that moves us into our next point, which is action. I had to take action. If my life was going to change, I had to move from setting the goals, right? I still do it now, to now actually taking action. And it's during this time of action that change begins. Remember, change is not an event, but it's a process, right? Change has begun. Whatever change you are seeking. With my daughter, she talked about when she began to take action, her financial status changed. Her, her financial standing changed when she began to take action. So here we are. We move from preparation to action. So, for example, maybe you stop smoking. Maybe you stop drugging. Maybe you stop procrastinating. I, I don't know. But you actually have now taken action. In other words, you began to face the challenges of life without the old behavior. All right? Now. If I'm facing the challenges of life now, I still got the same challenges, still got the same challenges, but I'm facing them without the old behavior. Guys, listen, when you change, the challenges won't stop coming. There are some challenges that you're going to have until they put you in the ground, until you see Christ face to face. And so, but now because of change, I'm facing them differently. I'm dealing with them differently. You guys follow me on this? I know I got preachy, but that's what I do. I'm a pastor of a church. So you never know when you're going to tune in and hear a sermon. You never know. It's what I do. It's what I was born to do, right? I can't do much, but I can do that. So um, so we move from preparation to action, to action. How do you feel when you start? When you uh, th Thanks, Debo. Debo Davis checked in and said, I needed some motivation today. Thank you. Man, Debo, thank you for tuning into the program and being part of it. Guys, you can still call in at 888-329-3306. After you've taken action on something, how does that make you feel, Jamie, after you've taken action toward that? How, what, it, you feel different, correct? Yes. I mean, I think it gives you a lot of encouragement. Sometimes you're taking the first step is the most difficult. And after you take it and you realize that wasn't so bad, you get kind of a confidence boost. And you're like, I can do this. Yeah. I don't know I don't know what, what I was waiting for. This isn't so bad. Nothing encourages you more than action. Janae, when you took action with your finances, how did you begin to feel? Um, yeah, I felt more in control of it. Yeah. Like it was uh, like everyone's saying a confidence booster, like, oh, this I could have been doing this five years ago. Yeah. I mean, nothing negative. And I, I, I could be around my daughter. Jasmine checks in and says she feels accomplished. I don't think anything negative happens when you take 
action towards behavior change. Uh, Jacqueline Kerbeck, Dr. Kerbeck, am I right in saying that? Does, does, does the negative occur when I take action or no? No, I feel completely empowered. And thank you for sharing your story, Ralph. That was really just so motivating. <laughs> and I feel like you move from needing outside validation to having your own internal validation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happens, guys, when, when, when we take action, right? We're taking action towards our goals. Remember, keeping in mind, Jason and Kyer and everybody listening, keeping in mind that it's a process. It's a process, right? It, it's it's over time. It's not an event. It's a process. Well, let me ask Jasmine, my daughter, right? Firstborn, firstborn, daddy's firstborn, first child that I took outside naked. I took her out as an infant outside midnight naked, held her up to the sky, made her look at the stars. And I said, behold, the only thing greater than you. She don't remember that because she was an infant. But yeah, I was, I was that type dad, right? <laughs> Jasmine. Has, has just watched Roots? I had just watched Roots again. <laughs> yeah, that's what, Jamie, why are you blowing it up? Why people, why are you telling everybody I had to watch Roots to do that? Yeah, I watched Roots. Didn't they do that? Who did it to? Kizzy or Kenta? Kenta Kunte? One of them. Kunta Kenta? I did that to my own children. I thought it was deep. Jasmine, 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 listen to your father carefully. Straws, two holes or one. I'm going to wait for her response. So after action, guys. Is there a step to do after, like, you've done, you pre-contemplated. Yeah. You contemplated. Mm -hmm. You're actioning. And it's been six months and you mess up. Well, that's where the next step is maintenance. <laughs> You're going to, and, and I, I'm glad you said that because I think Dr. Jack and Kerbeck can, will talk about what happens after you mess up because it's part of, of maintenance. But Antoinette Thomas says that she feels empowered after she takes action. Now, the next step is maintenance. And, and Doc, I don't know if you heard my daughter's question is, so along this process, because it's a process, not an event, we will have hiccups and mess ups. Am I right? Absolutely. And when you're putting your plan together, you should incorporate the fact that you very likely may fail, not just once, but numerous times, and keep focusing on that journey and why it is you want to make this change. Yeah. So That's so exactly. so you keep it in focus. You don't beat yourself up. Like, listen, guys, I, I, I'm going to tell you one of my, um, like, I love pizza. Like, I think I've, I've made that. Jason, I talk about this before, pizza, how my love for it. I don't think so, but you can go ahead. I'll eat a whole pie. Like, when these kids were growing up, they'll tell you. You know, my wife and kids was in the house. If we ordered pizza. We ordered two. One for daddy and one for everybody else. Sounds about right. Yeah, right? And and so I, I know that all that bread is no good for me. But every now and then, right? I don't eat the whole pie now. I just kind of keep it to four slices or something like that, right? And I beat myself up about it because I know that's not good for future Ralph Graves. See, I'm doing everything I'm doing everything for, for future Ralph Graves. And so I have these hiccups, whether it's in my diet or whether it's something else. Um, but I just kind of keep focused still on the end goal. I said, okay, it's gone. All right. You ate the five slices, right? You stopped the Dunkin' Donuts on the way home and got two chocolate frosted donuts and you hurry up and ate it before you got in the crib and threw the stuff out before you went upstairs because you didn't want nobody to know. But you're guilt ridden about it. You already did it, Ralph. You already did it. That was a hiccup. That's the only time this month you can do that. You could do. It. My daughter said, I'm going to say one hole. Okay, can we ban her from the show? Can we ban her? <laughs> She knows good and well it's two holes. Can we ban my daughter from the show? My oldest child, my firstborn. Okay, she says it's one. But anyway, if you have those hiccups, you got to keep going. You're going to have those hiccups. The next step is maintenance. We talked about maintenance. We talked about, I only got a few minutes left, right? Talked about maintenance. Once you've practiced the new behavior for about six months, we're in what we call the maintenance stage. Whether it's financial, whether it's health, whether or or maybe you quit smoking, maybe you stop. We're talking about stopping some unhealthy behaviors. I stopped it for six months. I'm in the maintenance stage stage, and now we can focus our our focus shifts to really integrating uh, the stage into your life uh, to really help you prevent a relapse. So in the maintenance stage, again, I should be measuring. I should be putting myself in the position to where I don't have a relapse. A hiccup is not 
a relapse. A relapse is I'm just back into this old behavior. All right. I've lost the 40 pounds. I held it off. I maintained it for a year. Now in year two, I didn't I relapse. I'm back up even further than I was before. That's a complete relapse. So in the maintenance spot, in the maintenance category, I have to now um, I have to now put in things, put in things in place that'll prevent a relapse. Is what I'm saying right, Jamie? Absolutely. And I think that you can't, like you said, you can't beat yourself up about it, but I think you can't go down the rabbit hole either just no. because you make the one mistake. Right. Like, just because you make one mistake doesn't mean you have to make the second one. And you can also factor in, like, what's a good counter behavior, like, for example, with the pizza. All right. Um, so you ate the four slices of pizza. Well, I knew that was wrong. I ate that at lunchtime. Okay, so dinner, I'm going to do make a better choice. Right. And I'm going to drink some water to try to flush this out and get back on track. Right. As opposed to, well, I ate four slices of pizza, so now I'm just going to get the wings. I'm going I'm to get the donuts. I'm going to go further <laughs> down the road. Of the <laughs> hey, y'all pray for me, man. I got a sweet tooth, man. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's about. Look, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. What do you say, Janet? <laughs> what do you say about that sweet tooth, Janet? Oh no, I'm not about the sweet tooth. Oh. But um, in changing and everything, I've had to, I've had to make sure that I was coming from a place of like self love. Like wow. I'm not doing this thing because I hate myself. I'm doing this thing because I love myself. Wow. So yeah. when it, so when you mess up or whatever, and you're just like, all right. That's okay. Tomorrow be better. But um, like as I've started doing things out of hatred for for myself, like right. out of hatred for like, well, I can't believe you do that. Yeah. And it and it actually you stay in that negative behavior longer because you're like, you're just this terrible thing. But like when you realize when you do something because you love yourself and you want to love yourself, yeah. you go further and the maintenance Man. goes longer. You drop that nugget with four minutes to go. We could do a whole <laughs> show on the importance of loving yourself. That you know what you're right. When I when you like I I went through this with with my my son. You you can't you can't shame yourself into doing right. Yeah. Man, Doctor Kerback, what do you say about that? That was huge. I love that. That is key. I think it's also important to in your plan to incorporate other people who are like-minded. Yes. So when you're in that maintenance stage, you can reach out to others and maybe even be an example for yeah. someone else. Maybe help lift somebody else up based on what you're going through. Yeah, yeah. Guys, this has been a wonderful show. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Dr. Kerbeck, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for, for hanging in there with the show. I know you, I, I said, I only need you for a half hour. You stayed in for the whole hour. Thank you for doing that. Um, uh, Jamie, Kair, Jason, Janae, all of the viewers, all of the listeners, you guys are the hero of the show. I'm just the host of it. I want to thank our sponsors uh, for, for sponsoring the show. If you're interested in doing that, guys, just uh, drop me an email at Ralph at Ralph Graves Jr. Dot com, dot com. We'll be back here again um, next week. You guys got any final thoughts? We'll say goodbye to everybody. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Bye, everybody. Likewise. Have a good one. All right, guys. Have, have a great day, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Dr. Kerbeck. Every day. Thanks, Facebook Live. Men and women of the United States Marine Corps. Thanks for checking in. Share this with somebody. To 